Yo, 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 what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Adam Moose, and today in this series called In Depth, I'm going to be breaking down everything that you need to know about Trundle Jungle. They crossed the wrong troll. Trundle is an OG pick that has been trolling around in the meta for years. Although he's a simple champion, his powerful dueling playstyle has a special place in my heart. If you enjoy the content, it really helps me out if you could leave a like and comment on the video to help your boy out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to talk with me and other members of the community looking to improve, be sure to join the Discord link that's in the description. Hope you guys can learn something. Enjoy the video. Abilities. Trundle's passive is called King's Tribute. Whenever an enemy dies near Trundle, he heals for a percentage of his maximum health. This is a very simple passive that provides Trundle with a ton of sustain while clearing his jungle and in fights. Trundle's Q is called Chomp. After activating, Trundle's next basic attack within 7 seconds deals bonus physical damage and slows the target. After using the empowered attack, Trundle gains bonus attack damage and also reduces the enemy's attack damage for the same duration. This is an extremely powerful dueling tool, allowing Trundle to gain an attack steroid while also removing threat from his enemies. Keep in mind that Chomp is also an auto attack reset, so making use of this consistently is very important to increase your DPS. Trundle's W is called Frozen Domain. Trundle coats the target location in ice for 8 seconds. While he's standing in the ice, Trundle gains bonus attack speed, movement speed, and also increased healing from all sources. In short, Trundle gains a massive steroid in his ice zone, making him a very scary brawler if enemies get up close and personal. Trundle's E is called Pillar of Ice. Trundle projects a huge pillar of ice at the target location for 6 seconds. This knocks back units and acts as an impassable terrain for the duration, also slowing all nearby enemies. This pillar is actually an amazing source of utility which can be used to help close the distance against enemies, create zone control in a teamfight, or even block enemies into a wall with some good pillar positioning. Trundle's ultimate is called Subjugate. Trundle starts to drain the life force out of the target enemy champion. This drain heals Trundle for a percentage of their current max health, dealing that amount as magic damage. He also steals 40% of their current armor and magic resist. Trundle even increases in size and shrinks the enemy. Half of the damage and stealing is applied instantly, and the other half are applied over the next 4 seconds. To add on to all of Trundle's other strong dueling abilities, this is the most powerful dueling spell of them all. Although it's not flashy, Subjugate will make sure that you're extremely powerful while also making your target very weak. After doing some research for ability maxing, I found players in lower elos max Q than W, where high elo trundles max Q than E. I highly recommend maxing E second since the utility that it provides is way too valuable to pass up. Runes. Now that we've got Trundle's kit under control, let's talk about his best rune setups for the current season. Press the Attack is not only Trundle's most commonly used keystone, it's also his all around best choice in almost every game. It gives you an insane amount of dueling power, especially since Trundle can proc it so fast with the auto Q auto combo. The only other keystone option being run would be Conqueror. You only want to run Conk if the enemy team is extremely tanky and the extra sustain would be beneficial. To close out the precision page, Triumph and either Legend Alacrity for more DPS, or Legend Tenacity versus teams with a lot of CC. Coup de Grasse is the best option into squishy teams for that extra execute damage, while Last Stand is better in games with more frontliners since you can sustain up more in extended fights. For secondary, Inspiration is the best option with some very interesting choices depending on your preferred playstyle. The most common choice in most elos is the Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight setup. Both these runes are just great in the current meta and fit what Trundle wants to do very well. When looking at challenger elo and pro players, I've been seeing most people actually running approach velocity for the extra chase down potential. I personally think this setup is extremely strong, since landing a pillar on an enemy will make it pretty much impossible for them to escape. Although inspiration is the best secondary, Nimbus Cloak and Water Walking is another solid setup in the sorcery tree for some extra map mobility and river skirmishing power. For rune shards, attack speed, adaptive force, and either armor or magic resist depending on your jungle matchup, are the standard choices. Items. Now for items, Trundle has a pretty straightforward build with some slight tweaks here and there depending on the game. For starters, 
Red Smite and Blue Smite are both viable, depending on your jungle matchup and team comps. Red Smite is great into a lot of melees and duelists, where Blue Smite is better into ranged team comps for some extra utility. For boots, you're mainly going to be choosing between plated steel caps and merc treads. Steel caps are great into heavy AD or auto attack based teams, where merc treads provide some magic resistant tenacity if the enemy team has a ton of crowd control. Now for mythics, Divine Sunder is the best option by far on Trundle. It gives him amazing dueling stats and sustain, which allows him to crush any opponent who gets into melee range of him. If you want to choose something a bit off meta, Trinity Force can be a good damage option, and either Sunfire Aegis or Frostfire Gauntlet for a full tank option. One thing I want to mention before listing Trundle's full build options is Tiamat. Tiamat used to be a staple item to rush for Trundle in past seasons to greatly increase his clear speed. Although Tiamat is still very strong on Trundle, I really only recommend rushing it if you're super far ahead, since you're trading off a lot of dueling power for the faster clears. From your Mythic on, your item options are extremely wide open. Items like Thornmail, Randuin's Omen, and Spirit Visage are all staple defensive item choices, while Sterax Gage and Titanic Hydra are very powerful offensive options. When deciding on what items to choose when closing out your build, it's extremely important to keep in mind what you're playing against. Your main goal should be to get as beefy as possible while also adding in some damage to become a massive threat. Trundle acts more of a front to back team fighter, meaning that you'll most likely need to soak up damage for your team while hitting the enemy's front line before that you're able to get onto the enemy back line. Tips and tricks. Now that we've got Trundle's general info down, let's discuss some tips and tricks and really take your game to the next level. First off is simply using your Q as an auto attack reset as often as possible. This can be done at any point while clearing or while fighting enemies and is extremely important to remember. Not only does this increase your clear speed, but it also helps proc your Presti attack much faster in those closed duels. Next is to always try to get as much value out of your W as possible. If you don't need the move speed right away, sometimes saving your W for when the fight actually begins can be a big difference maker. Maxing out your W's uptime for the extra attack speed and healing can really change a fight in your favor. Next is knowing how to optimally use Trundle's E. Using this spell properly is one of the main differentiators between a good and bad Trundle. First off is saving your pillar for when the enemy's mobility spells are down. This is crucial since getting around a well-placed pillar with no dashes is extremely annoying. The actual placement of the pillar can be very creative as well. If placed correctly, you can actually block off exit paths next to walls and force enemies to walk all the way around while also being slowed. This can also be done when enemies are chasing you. If you're in a melee duel and want to escape, you can actually place the pillar directly in front of you and between your enemy, pushing them back a bit and forcing them to close the distance. Now if you want to get fancy, you can actually use the trundle pillar to interrupt certain animations for some extreme counterplay. Examples are Lee Sin's second Q, Jack's Q, Rel W, or even blocking an ally getting hooked by Blitzcrank. You can also use your E to cancel important channels such as Misfortune Ultimate and Velkaz R. And lastly of course, don't forget you can also set up Yasuo R with your E knockup as well. Lastly is making sure that you use your ultimate subjugate at the correct time. One big mistake I see is Trundle's getting way too excited and ulting right away, instead of waiting for the enemy to commit with their mobility spells first. This is important since it can be very easy for high mobility champions to bait out your ult and then dash away wasting your cooldown. It's also important to remember that your ultimate can steal way more defensive stats against tanky opponents. If possible, try to ult the enemy's Malphite or Ornn so that you get extremely tanky while their tank becomes super squishy. Jungle Clears Now let's jump into Trundle's most common jungle paths to make sure that you're starting off the game on the right foot. First off and most common is the 3 camp, gank or invade path. This is the standard path since Trundle can easily clear both buffs and Gromp, and begin making early plays. Since his early game is so strong, it's crucial to try and find angles where you can either take free gank opportunities, or invade weak enemy junglers and try and throw off their game plan. The reason this path is so key on Trundle, is since it allows him to kill all the signal target camps, and instantly begin fighting. Keep in mind that you can also farm up another camp if the timing is off, so most times I recommend taking wolves if you want to hit up 4 camps before ganking. Next up is the 5 camp clear into Scuttle. This is the safest path, usually used if there's no early aggressive plays to be made. 
simply clear both buffs, and three other camps on the way to your desired scuttle crab. This is the go-to path if no action is to be had early, and you just want to farm up until scuttle spawns so you can hit level 4. Just keep in mind that Trundle's AoE camp killing is very slow, so ideally skipping either raptors or krugs is a good idea to speed up your clear. Lastly is the level 2 gank path. Now this is a very risky one, but can be extremely rewarding if you have a good window for it. Simply clear one buff, level up E level 2, and try and wrap behind an unsuspected laner for a free kill. This is a high risk, high reward path, so make sure that before going for this, you really think about the consequences this could have, and if it's even worth going for. Weaknesses Trundle's biggest weakness is that he really struggles into very mobile comps. Since his only utility is his pillar, high mobility champs can easily work around Trundle's kit and save their movement spells for after you use your E. To build on top of this, since your ult is much better when you steal a tanky enemy's stats, Trundle struggles at 1v1 in carry bruisers such as Aurelia and Jax. They out DPS his healing since you're not really stealing many resistances, but even when you do ult, they can just dash away and wait. Besides champion matchups, Trundle not having any AoE spells is definitely a weakness. This is why Tiamat in previous seasons was a must have on Trundle. His clear is not the worst, but taking raptors and krugs is an absolute mission. Strengths now let's talk about what makes Trundle great. In my opinion, Trundle is one of the best anti-tank champions in the entire game. If the enemy team has a frontline, you're pretty much always useful. Understanding what champions you should pick Trundle into is actually one of the most important things to know. Next is how he's actually pretty simple mechanically, but allows for smart junglers to really control the game. He's such a unique champion who's always relevant at some point in the meta since his strengths are so defined. Speaking of this, Trundle is a powerhouse when skirmishing in melee range. He steals your AD, slows you, attacks crazy fast, heals, and yoinks your defenses. To build on top of this, he's actually very good when on low resources. This means that even if you get behind, you still bring some valuable things to the mid and late game fights. Another very underrated thing is the absolute massive amount of healing Trundle gets. He sustains when killing jungle camps and even while fighting in minion waves. When you stack some defensive items later on, you become insanely tanky for the items that you have. Trundle's a champion that has been used for so long in League and remains an extremely important pick in pro play. His build is versatile, he can support your team if he's behind, or can carry when he's ahead. He's pretty much always useful and can be used in many different styles. Playing against a master Trundle feels like you're always getting bullied every time that you leave your jungle. That will do it for my in-depth guide on Trundle Jungle. I appreciate you all for watching, and if you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for future in-depth videos. If you have any questions or opinions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. To show my appreciation for all of you who stayed to the end, I'll be giving away free coaching sessions every month to members of the Discord, so be sure to click on the link in the description if you're interested. With all that being said, thanks again for watching, until the next video, peace out.